up, guys? Let's see you coming in. Make it quick. Are you busy? Don't act like you're busy, Steve. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to do this on my phone because I don't feel like dragging the laptop out. What's up, Oklahoma? I was just in Oklahoma Saturday. What's up, guys? I don't know if I'm gonna like this. I can't see the, the chat so quick. Still on YouTube? Today marks the day. It's been almost three months. <laughs> I've had nothing positive to say, man. Not a thing. What Alex do now? I don't know. Not sure. Yeah, we got 20 people in here. Yeah, okay, so uh, I don't know if this is going to be one chat at a time. I might have to try to figure this out as we go. I haven't really done a live, live stream landscape on my phone. Uh, so we'll figure that out. Anyway, uh, reason I've been absent from YouTube, I have not had anything of value to say, period. Nothing good, nothing positive this year has sucked. Uh, for me, on the business side, it's sucked on the personal side. It is, uh, it's been a bad year. But, um, Steve Miller, oh, so, um, I was wanting to kind of get you guys' take on what you're seeing. I mean, besides the obvious uh, with fuel, has anybody else just had just a, a not right year? If anybody's been driving, anybody that's not driving, I mean, is is it bad everywhere or is it just out here? Is it just this truck? I'm just I'm just wondering. And I'm not I'm not even talking about rates and the money. Why look high? Because uh, I've been up since three in the morning. Anyway. Um, it's it's not about the money. The money's there. It's uh, it's the amount that's that's coming out of of the money that's there. Uh, that's what's got me uh, messed up. I don't know if any of y'all caught a a stream that I did with uh Danny hauling cash. Um, I've been battling mentally uh for about two solid months now with uh. But just dipping out of the business altogether this this industry um and like i said it's not because i can't generate the revenue um i just can't convince myself to hand over most of it off of my back you know what i'm saying um as of right now uh i'm gonna i'm gonna press on i'm gonna see what we're doing i'm out here working i was actually working the first weekend in a very very long time i i spent more than five days in the truck so I'm, I'm not a part-timer anymore. Uh, I, I'm out here hoarding it up so that I can uh, go home and watch and uh, see what fuel does, really. Fuel's the killer right now. Uh, I wanna see which direction it goes. And uh, that's, that's where I'm at right now. Um, I'm not jumping ship just yet. There's a lot of things going on uh, that aren't good with me on the business side of things. But um we'll see what happens. But that's what I was I was just wanting to to feel out, let you guys know why I've been missing. But uh, MIA, I don't I don't really have any treats for anybody, you know what I mean? I, it's hard to make a video about something to do in, in an industry like this, you know, it's hard to make a video of like, here's how to jump into this thing that's this nose diving right now, guys. You know, yay, everything everything's great, and this is this is how you get in here and lose your ass. But um, that's why I haven't made a video because most of my videos are for people looking into this, and that's just not something I can do on a on in, in my conscience. You know, it's not. I don't want to be promoting jumping into this. Everybody's just kind of treading water right now that's already in it. Trying to stay afloat, so you grab the drink. So, uh, is there anything you guys want to know? What's been going on with me, or what's been going on with you? Anything anybody want to say? This might turn into a humongous rant, which uh, at this point today is fine by me. I got some awesome news this morning. If anybody follows me on Instagram, uh, my fuel card, my EFS card 
sent me an email. Um, maybe I'll just read it. Oh, my phone's right there. <laughs> this is stupid. Uh, sent me an email saying that they had, if you want to see the email, go to, go to my Instagram. But uh, basically they said that whatever pricing program they used had a glitch on uh, uh, March the 4th that uh, gave EFS higher discounts nationwide than, it, than, uh, than were higher, higher than the proper discount it should have been. And uh, they're back billing all of us. Uh, they said that I owed 923 that'll be taken out as other fee. Uh, so I replied to that email. Um, and go ahead and send me an invoice uh, to make me current and then cancel my account. So I'm dropping EFS. Uh, the Really, the, the dagger in that was at the very end where this is a one-time occurrence. And uh, from now on, you know, it, all, all your benefits and your discounts will be, um, you know, as usual. And in my mind, I'm like, yeah, till I get the next email saying that I owe you money. So... It's reverse to me, guys. I don't know why why they're going this direction. If, if it was their glitch that screwed that up, uh, maybe you should start billing them instead of us, the recipient. So that's what I was over that. I got a whole, how's my diet going? I don't know. <laughs> South, TP, Alex is here. How's your fuel bill looking, bro? <laughs> Think about jumping in a hot shot maybe three to four months from now, hoping fuel prices go down. They're gonna have to go down, buddy. Especially if, if you're not in this and and you, you don't know your lanes and you don't know your where's the bees and all that. Now's not the time. Right now is definitely not the time. Shouldn't even be on the road. I should have done this. Should have done this last year instead of just chilling, working, what, 100 days, I think? 110 days, maybe? to fill your truck 10k every two days that's gonna hurt that million. <laughs> oh man what's up kb haven't seen you in a long time i guess nobody's seen me in a long time join part-time much less stress yeah you're right until uh until you need to make some moves until everything comes in at once oh another thing is um uh, I don't know if any of you guys remember me talking about inter me and Enterprise are kind of button heads. I haven't really made it super public. I mean, I haven't done like a video about it or anything like that. But um, my renewal, when, when you do this long-term rental, you sign a, a one-year contract. My renewal's due this year, this month. And uh, Enterprise got a hold of me and let me know that since I don't drive 5,000 miles a month, they have no problem billing me and taking my money for 5,000 miles a month. But since I don't actually drive 5,000 miles a month, um, they're going to have to up my rate. And that's probably not going to happen. But truck shopping right now is is no bueno. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I really don't. That's, a, that's another thing I'm battling, you know. It's like every everything's going up. It's just, it's it sucks. But like I said, it's that that's it's almost the principle to that, you know. You you want to bill me for 5k and I don't complain. You take my money for 5k. Neither one of us complain about that. But then you're going to turn around and complain that I don't actually drive 5,000 miles. Well, who should be bitching about that? If they want to complain to me about how much I drive, then they need to bill me actual mileage and then you got a leg to stand on. But if you're double dipping on me, and then you want to bitch about how much I'm actually driving my company? I don't know. That just that, that don't rub me right. But what am I going to do? I can't go get a truck. There are no trucks. And the trucks that are there are marked up 30%. So, uh, oh, more fun. More fun in the barrel. And that's just two things. You know, fuel. Oh, actually, three. Yeah, we went over the fuel card. But um, yeah, that's one thing I was wanting to know how are freight prices in the hotshot world? I heard they suck on hot shot, but they're great on semi. Cars are kind of static, which is stupid considering how much diesel's increased. Um, I was doing the math. I think my fuel cost has risen like 11% just this year, but rates on cars, as far as I can see, have actually dropped a little bit, uh, about five cents a mile on average. Freaking prices suck. 
got Duramax you can buy. <laughs> next month yeah operation getting greedy yeah I think they've been greedy man it's just they're they're really testing it right now look six today they're actually decent right at the road yeah uh, another thing about cars what's up Britt um, when would it be? I guess it been like three weeks ago I was in Chicago um, I booked nine cars through eight different brokers. One was two cars in one shot. I had to cancel all nine of those in the same day. Um, Cause I booked three to fill my trailer up, had to cancel all those. All three of those were picked up already. And these were through brokerages I used. This wasn't like shady deals on you ship or anything. Then booked three more, uh, two had already been picked up and one wasn't even ready yet. It wasn't gonna be ready till next week. It wasn't not that, it, it's not that it wasn't ready, it wasn't even there. Um, and then the last three uh, were all three picked up also. So uh, I don't know if that's a deal with the Chicago area. I meant to ask some people, guys that haul cars, are you noticing that around the Chicago area? A whole bunch of just basically undercut bookings? Uh, Cause that was crazy. And I hadn't really been to Chicago in a long time uh, looking to get out and that, that, that just sucked. So it's nine, like I said, nine cars straight I had to cancel. And it spent all day doing that, by the way. So burned an entire day and had zero cars to put on the truck. Um, but like I said, I, I don't run Chicago a ton, so I don't know if that's just like how it is up there. But it seemed to me like a lot of people were undercutting somebody. Uh, stay park for 10 days. Yeah, I've, I've done a lot of 20s and 30 days <laughs> being parked. It's just it. Sucks. 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 Uh, company driver. Fuel price is going to hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Even if you get big discounts, it's still too high. Fuel surcharge applicable. The surcharge really only plays ball in the, in the realm of the, uh, Negotiating your own contracts as far as like board board loads and stuff like that. It's included which right now I, I actually meant to look that up I keep looking for my phone and I'm on it <laughs> um, Can somebody get online can somebody in here get online and look up what the national fuel surcharge is right now at the national I want to know what it is because you take that fuel surcharge and subtract it from all these rates, you'll see what the what the base rate is for that, and you'll see that it's pure garbage and that no one is factoring in fuel right now, which sucks. Uh, which means that a really good rate, or even the really bad rates, either way, the brokerages are keeping either the same or more, because like I said, I've seen a lot drop. A lot of the freight guys are saying freight sucks right now. Um, it's not like it just costs less to ship something, right? Okay, somebody's keeping more of it. So I just I can't use my phone. Yeah, dude, I've never, <laughs> I've never done this before on the phone, um, and actually tried to like read comments and stuff. I've done a couple of lives on the phone, but it was just showing something. Uh, let's see here. Dollar fifty-five fuel surcharge is a dollar fifty. Are you sure? Because I think when it was like three bucks or something like that, I think it's up for. A, I think three something is like fifty, fifty, fifty-two cents or so. I don't think dollar fifty five don't sound right. That's insane. Dollar fifty five fuel surcharge right now. Lem fifty five, that'd be sweet. <laughs> the fuel surcharge is a dollar fifty five right now and you're booking loads at two dollars a mile. You're literally getting a forty five cent mile load. That's the base rate on that load, which is a lie and a half. So I don't know who's go, who's gonna speak for us, you know. Um, that's not not a good game to be in right now. It's uh, that sucks. That really sucks. That's one reason I'm I'm glad that I, I can swing cars because I I can easily do three to four dollars a mile, but you know collectively between the three. But even like I said with that, my my fuel cost has risen eleven percent just this year, and uh, the gross is actually well. Potential gross, basically. I mean, gross, gross could have been a lot better last year if I'd actually worked. But um, 
though it's under four dollars a mile yeah yeah um i don't know man i don't know about i don't know about it right now when you get them raised rates you can't you can't you can ask and they'll tell you no and the reason is because somebody else is going to take it that's why they won't raise the rates fuel surcharge is pie that's sweet <laughs> Isn't that a, that's the date, isn't it? Today's pie day. 314. Lobby, I don't know. I, I, I've got my own opinion about unions and stuff like that, but. Uh, and there, there really isn't a collective, you know what I'm saying? Um, we can get all of us together, we want to, all the owner office stuff like that, but as far as mega carries and stuff like that, they've been trying to push us out of this industry for a long time way longer than I've been in it and I've been in it for over a decade now and um, it's just uh, it's, it just sucks I think uh, the shittiness of everything right now uh, has always been there it's just now people are really pushing the, the limit on it and they are exposing themselves as, as to how shitty they can get and uh, to basically see who survives I think is, is, is just the, the mantra right now because um, a lot of people are going to have to cut and run and people that are going to cut and run that only know how to do this or are only good at this. I mean, and I'm not saying that in a derogatory way. This is what I'm good at. I don't really have, I, I don't, I don't have any other, you know, I don't have a college degree or anything like that, but you know, this is what I'm good at and this is what I know how to do. Now, good at this is on a lot of levels. Um, it's a lot more than just driving, which if you revert back to a company just to ride it out, that's the perfect storm for this, you know, because everybody goes right back to a, to a company spot. And um, it just sucks, this really sucks. And I hope that doesn't happen to more people than it needs to happen to, but um, I don't know, I hope everybody was ready for this. I, you know, I had, I had enough of a pad, but I don't know how much is, I don't know how long it's gonna last. Um, it's not not to say I'm not drawing a profit. Like I said, it, if if you're if you're smart with this and you know how to work it, uh, you can still make some money right now. But that that profit margin starting to shrink, you know. And uh, for guys just looking to get into this or that just got into this right now, I I feel for you because you're gonna have to learn real real quick, like tomorrow, quick. And um, that's nearly impossible. A cycle like an OA, yeah. Yeah, you guys running without knowing what it costs. Yeah, yeah, that's a biggie on on booking. Like, um, that's why people are looking for full loads instead of instead of playing the partial game. I know the partial game sucks, guys, but that's where you make your money doing this. If you're if you're just looking for full truck loads because it's easy, you're you're cutting yourself short just to uh, just to save some work, basically. We need better brokers. That's that's an understatement. <laughs> uh, Recipe for disaster kills new companies. Yep, yep, yeah. It puts people under, you know, and it's you know, and then 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 what do we do? You know what I mean? Recipe cheap equipment sent months. Not not if not if banks and uh, dealerships have anything to say about it. That's who's going to be holding it. Even the auction, you can't get a break. That's why dealerships aren't even buying from auction right now. Uh, I haven't ran auction to dealer in a long time. Then you sure ain't taking any trades to auction. That's that's it. That's all dealer trades are anymore. Uh, between that and all the online auctions like ACV and car offer and all that, nobody's doing it. Nobody's doing it, bro, Paul. <laughs> in the tape deck. Oh man. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on. A lot going on in the background right now. And uh, none of it's good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like what could you do but laugh about that? Um, I, I don't have any answers for you guys. Like I said, just hang on. If, if that's what you feel like doing, if that's what, uh, yeah, if that's what you wanna do. If it's not what you want to do, I mean, it's, it's really not what I want to do. But like I said, I've, I got a lot on my plate 
as far as people counting on me and this is what I know you know what I mean uh, I just don't know don't know what to do price on equipment won't go down yeah I wouldn't doubt that at all yeah once they see people will buy this why would they drop the price again and they can blame it on you know everything you know manufacturing rates and all that and some of it's legit you know where the the, the cost of supplies and materials and stuff go up but you know the markup People, a lot of people taking advantage of this in a in a wrong way. You know what I mean? And it just seems like if you if you are holding this steering wheel, you get shit on the hardest. This, this is this is where it all falls. The guy holding this right here. That's what it all falls. Every single bit of it. It don't matter if you own your own company, if your name's on your door or not. If you're holding this, this is where it all falls, and you and you are screwed. with money yep Let's see so I guess we can open up a Q&A if anybody feels like that <laughs> or jump in with your own rant partial loads are the route to go you got it people uh so does anybody chime in out here I'll I'll either hear you out or we can all answer together um if that's the real fuel surcharge, I almost want to pause this and look on my phone so I can see it. <laughs> if a dollar fifty-five is fuel surcharge right now, two dollars a mile is like driving for a dollar a mile last year. That's sickening. Fuel surcharge is higher than most people's operating costs. That's stupid. Work for a company for a while, so yeah, just want to get my authority and go for it two months ago. Oh, you will, you will have to. Okay, it's the oil field company, get fuel surcharge and good rates, so must live in gold stage. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing about the oil industry. That's just like right now, I'm in, I'm in North Dakota, and uh, you know, there's nothing, nothing to do but that here really <laughs> just freeze to death and do that yeah. um, shut down before you ever started that sucks not a bad thing right now though how do you get your operating costs what you want to do is you want to I mean you can really only ballpark it because operating cost changes all the time and so does your income so if you if you have been in business for a while you can play a game of averages with your numbers but if you haven't you're just going to have to kind of set you know realistic numbers like with your running mileage you want to do like 25 2500 miles if that's what you're going to run 2000 you know a week or so if you're going to do less than that make it less than that but what you're going to want to do is calculate your fuel uh any payments you got the truck trailer um i can't make this in a video because like a hundred trolls would talk about oh well you need to take your ink pen deductions that you buy every six months and and your printer papers and all that look just take your big things take your fuel your insurance any payments you have and um divide that into your mileage and then that will show you What's your rate per mile is? Your operating cost rate per mile, or not your rate per mile, but your, that's, that will show you how much money you are spending per mile to stay afloat X month, week, whatever. Um, you could tally that up and, and that's, you definitely want to allow yourself how much you want to pay yourself. Um, to whereas if your operating cost is a dollar, um, you're gonna wanna at least, you know, that, that, that tallies in everything. Anything above that is how much you're going to make, essentially. And that doesn't count emergencies and stuff like tire changes and, and stuff like that, you know. That's what's not getting spent right away for sure. And um, so if your operating cost is a dollar, it would be stupid to run at like a dollar twenty, dollar fifty, even really right now, two bucks. You know, to giving yourself a dollar isn't going to leave you with much at the end of the day. Um, 
especially when things go south, you know, stuff starts breaking. Just like today, I bought two tires and a hub assembly because <laughs> I snapped a wheel stud. Um, didn't see that coming. So, you know, it, it bites you every once in a while. That's why you gotta, you gotta definitely make sure. What's up, AJ? I almost called you the other day. Um, I contact to be a new driver in California uh, to be one or just feel out what it's what, what are you talking about Cut to be a new driver are you getting into this or the only California person I know that that does this is uh, Natalie at a uh, hotshot adventures she runs almost strictly Cali well she did I don't know if she does now 500 miles a day <laughs> Yeah, with freight, that's that's easy to do. 140 gallons last two and a half days in my setup. You should drive this, buddy. 30 gallons, boy, you're stopping every four hours, at least. Depends on the wind. <laughs> yeah. It's like, just filling this little thing up. It's like, I don't even hit 30 gallons at a, at a fill up and it's like 140, 150. TP living the drama, right? What are you talking about? But is he still talking? I gotta scroll. I'm missing it. Now, yeah, managing that many trucks, just, I mean, I wouldn't even want to do payroll for that many, which he probably don't. He probably has somebody doing that for him, but where have I been? Uh, not on YouTube. <laughs> I've been in my head, man. I've, I've just been, I've been in a bad place trying to figure out what's going on and what I'm going to do, you know? Uh, doing well with fuel prices. I'm doing well business wise. I'm not doing well mentally with it. It's it's uh, it's really messing me up. It's disgusting. Uh, tank tractor, yeah, 500, yeah. I remember, I remember in uh, was it 09? Right after the 08 deal, is uh, was well, like 700 bucks or something like that to fill up with just a regular company truck. I thought that was insane like crazy 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 now i've never seen the pumps flip over a thousand bucks but that's that's just sick no home every day will help no i think it's actually made it worse because <laughs> then i i just like almost refuse to leave it's just it's so hard to get back out here and it it, it just sucks man Stand being out three to four weeks. Yeah, I can't do that. Ten days about my max anymore. You getting the businesses working for someone. Yeah, just in the hot shot world, man, it's it's not easy to find somebody that's hiring. Um, a good company, anyway. As a, it, it's rough, especially if you're being like region specific. If you're just trying to stay in California or get with a company that's in California. You know, there's no, there's no major advertisements for that. You just kind of got to ask around and pay attention. Uh, get on the Facebook groups, get on Instagram and all that. Uh, you'll see job openings every once in a while. Truck, you don't sleep. Maybe three hours. Yeah. Out of bed in the morning, being home. <laughs> I can get out of bed. I just don't want to get in the truck, man. It's easy. <laughs> that's easy for me but yeah this is uh this sucks i've never seen i've never seen this i don't know what her company name is um she's out of uh you can find her on youtube and uh i think she's got an instagram and all that but i think she gives her email out on youtube or she's got a patreon or something like that but yeah it's natalie um hot shot adventures she's the one in cali Great for the sleep schedule. Yeah. Nap 10 hours. Nap 10 hours. Chin up. Hopefully things will get better in two years. <laughs> yeah, no joke, dude. Uh, why not hire a few drivers and go that route? Okay. Let's talk about that. There's a major reason I don't want to hire anybody. Number one, I don't want a ton of assets on me right now, which I'm <laughs> thankful I don't. Because um, if, if this all upended tomorrow... All I do is take this truck back to Indiana and I can sell that trailer to somebody on here in about two minutes and I'm out. 
of the business completely. That's nice, especially right now. If I were to hire drivers, I would need equipment. Um, I'd have to buy trailers, I'd have to buy trucks. That's to hire drivers, which is what you said. Now to lease people on, that's kind of a thing in itself. I don't know what I would wanna do. I don't know many reputable dispatch companies because I haven't used one. Um, I don't know who I would trust with that. I don't know what I'd be able to promise a driver coming on with me with a dispatch company I've never used, you know what I'm saying? Um, that's hard to spin and I almost really wouldn't even want to do it with cars. I, if I were going to hire people or if I were going to bring people on, I would almost want it to be freight because I know the freight side is a lot, it's better as far as the dispatch services go. Now I know there are probably some good car ones out there, but there's not a lot and cars, <laughs> I trust me. Okay. <laughs> but I don't cars are such a heavy liability um i don't know if i would want anybody under me um hauling cars honestly unless i knew them personally or knew them for a long time uh, that's big risk man big risk especially with the way i run i run a lot of like i'll, I'll book like three cars at like three to five hundred dollar range and they're only going like three to 400 miles. That way I can pick them up, drive it, drop it. And I just made 12 to 1500 that day. But chop that up to what I said, I'm hauling cars for like three to 500 bucks. So if, if a rock hits the right windshield or the right side view mirror on some of these cars that I haul, that rate's gone. And then some, now I'm out of pocket. Plus the rates, the rates tore up. Cause I'd have to, I'd have to replace that. And the rates don't pay enough to really pay for, I mean, so I'm saying there's, there's a ton of liability in cars and that, I mean, we're just talking about rocks. We're not talking about big accidents and that's where insurance would come up. I'm still not two years old. I still have progressive. So most likely if something happened, I get dropped. My rates wouldn't go up. They would drop me flat out and I can't have that either. So that's why I don't have anybody driving under me in either situation right now there's a lot to do with that i've been a driver manager before i really honestly don't feel like babysitting and i know it'll probably get to that point if i do you know expand in at, at some point i'll have to be there's going to be that super rough transition to where i'm doing this i'm doing <laughs> the hiring and firing i'm doing the uh, hopefully not the dispatching because I've done that too, but um, you know, I'm going to be the owner, operator, and driver manager on top of that. So my, my operating hours a day are now 24 seven, right? And I just, I'm not to that point to where I want to do that right now. But um, I know, I know, I know that like to expand, you got to, you got to go through your hardships and all that. It's just, I just don't feel like it's the time. Like I said, the, the insurance don't line up just yet. Now, when I do hit that two year mark, uh, it's it's gonna it's gonna have to be something I consider for real. Because um, like, like I said, Danny hauling cash, Danny and I were talking the other day and he's right, you know, if he wakes up and he don't feel good or he don't feel like it, uh, he don't have to go to work that day. And the company still makes money because he's got drivers. If I wake up and don't feel good, or I get sick, say I get, end up in the hospital, um, I'm, I'm not making anything. I'd go under if I were if it were long term. So uh, it's something to think about. I can't do this forever, you know. That's that's obvious. So you know, do I do I want to pick it up and carry on? Um, is this something that I would want? my kids to pick up and carry on on anything. I mean, would I want them to pick up and carry on doing this? Probably not. Uh, but, you know, management, dispatch service, you know, some, some, something in a little bit, you know, desk job tier of the transportation industry, possibly. Um, so it's, it's a lot to think about there. You know, there's a lot of directions I can go with this still even as things are right now. Um, 
it's kind of it's, it's making me feel weird even thinking about it with the current way things are but um anyway to answer your question that that is why that that's why i'm not throwing drivers under me to to help bail my bucket you know um like i said i'm, I'm gonna just kind of play sideline sit back and watch for a minute um you know, of course i'm out here now um had enough the coffers i guess to uh to be able to do that which I, i'm glad i can do i mean honestly like i said i i feel for you guys that just got into this because i know how it is just coming in i know how it is being new i know how it is trying to figure this out um it sucks and, it, and it's rough and and i didn't have <laughs> i didn't have this kind of overhead uh when i was trying to do that and i couldn't imagine trying to do it with fuel the way it, you know what i mean um there's times I deadheaded just because I gave up, you know what I mean? Um, I wouldn't even think about doing that right now. Cause I mean, you're, you're running, a, <laughs> you're running a pretty heavy loss. If you deadhead distance, like hundreds of miles right now. So, you know, good luck to you guys. I hope you came in with some money. Um, I know I'm glad that's, that's one thing I've always talked about, you know, watch coming into this and, and don't pack yourself out on debt, trying to get all your stuff together. And uh, this this is not a solution <laughs> for anybody watching this thinking about Hot Shot uh, now more than ever. This is not a, a solution to your financial problems. Okay, this isn't going to bail you out of uh, of of problems. This is going to create them for sure. But you're going to need money coming into this because you it, it it's going to take a while to figure it out. Um, some quicker than others, but. Generally, I'd say to learn some good lanes around where you live, uh, to really get comfortable with brokers and everything else you got to deal with doing this, all the paper side, you know, your regs. Yeah, it's going to take, I, I would I would give you at least two, have two months worth of good money, you know, to, to cover everything, anything you make in the business is a cherry on top, sweet, awesome. You know, have yourself at least two months, bare minimum. I would I would try for more than that. But, you know, I know it's got a lot of people and, and I was one of those guys, you know, just on a, on a, um, you know, a, not a big town that I'm from, you know, not a lot of money to be made there. And to go from making three to $400 a paycheck, you know, it's 15 grand in the bank is unreal. Like, I mean, that's like an almost unattainable goal if you've got a car payment and all that, you know. But I mean, you you really need a figure like that in the bank if you're gonna start this, and that's after you've set it up. You know, that that's after you spent a few grand diving into it. But um, I think I've covered that before. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, money right now, guys. Money's rough. So let me see what you guys been saying. You gotta contact me. Uh, get a hold of me on Instagram snack deck over yeah step deck step deck's the way to go i know they're high but man that uh that diamond c step deck perfect yeah one man shows though not burn you out yeah oh dude i've been a burnout out for i've been burnt out for 10 years in this industry i hate almost everything about it no worries of getting burnt out buddy <laughs> i'm already there i've been there so long uh, right, safe out there. A lot of people see the gross numbers and don't realize the net income. Yeah, and a lot of people, you know what? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of point to that a little bit. A lot of people, when I was doing a couple of money videos, I think it was like 20, <clears throat> yeah, 2020, I did a couple of money videos of like gross for all that. And you can, I'm telling you, you can't break down your numbers enough for people. They want to like basically have, they want to log into your bank account and check it out for you. Like, that's how stupid it gets. And it's like, gross is good. Here's this. Now, if you get your own operating costs, my gross don't matter because I don't live. You, my gross won't be your gross. I promise. It could be good. It could, or my, my net won't be yours. And you know what? I could, I could run the same gross the next week and it, my net will still be different. Every single, you, it's so hard to duplicate out here that like the, those those figures don't matter you know what i mean it doesn't matter it's like that works for me obviously i'm still doing it if it works for you though plug your own numbers in 
there you go. Because gross is a lot more than just, or gross to net, realistically, um, is a lot more than just your fuel cost and your business stuff. You know, you got to plug your personal life into that too. Then you can see if this is going to be worth it or not. So that that's why I don't really do the money anymore. Um, that's why, you know, if this amount of gross is great, that's good for me. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I don't even mess with that anymore, honestly. But but yeah, you, you got to put everything in there, man. It can't just be business expense. You got to put your lifestyle in it too. Got DOT, one haul, papers in order, insurance, and fuel. Yeah. You have a full-time job and you got all that set up? Man, yeah, if you're not running, dude, yeah, insurance is gonna hit pretty hard. But other than that, unless you got unless you got fuel payments or uh, truck payments and stuff, um, you should be able to coast on that. Oh, uh, what are you hearing from the truckers? I don't really talk to anybody, to be honest with you. Too. <laughs> I really don't. Um, everybody's singing the same song right now, you know, uh, about how bad it all sucks, and you know, it's like. I know I'm out here too, so <laughs> I get it. You know what? What are you gonna do? Just shop, shop around. You gotta find the cheapest you can, and uh, and be smart about where you're going. You know, there's a lot of money that I could have scooped up. Now, here's one thing about the gross and net. There's a lot of money I could have grossed going to Washington, Oregon. Um, there was some going to Nevada, Nevada, however you guys want to say it. But uh, fuel is also a dollar more a gallon out there than it is here. Plus, there's the Rocky Mountains in the way. So how much can you actually keep? You know what I mean? You, you got to consider it. You, fuel mileage is priority number one right now. It should be for anybody driving out here. Anybody know what happened to DD214? Or is that a person? Because I have one of those. <laughs> I was in the... I was in the military. Can you hear a hotshot guy speaks truth and not nonsense? Yeah, they would make some thumbnails and throw a whole lot of numbers on there. This, I grossed $8 million this week. Okay. I try to help you guys. That's like I said, that's why I haven't been on here because I haven't had anything good to say, not positive, and I'll, I'll go back to what I already said. It, it weighs on me to be giving advice to people on how to jump into an industry that is face planted right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, that, that, that just weighs on me personally. So that's why, that's why you had guys haven't seen me. Um, and I'll be honest with you. It's been kind of nice taking a break from <laughs> the YouTube stuff. And I'd probably take me an hour and a half to edit a five minute video right now, but um, I definitely want to, I'll, I'll start making more videos, uh, when I can coast a little bit, um, soon we'll see. I mean, hopefully soon we'll see what happens, but, um, when I go back to semi now, if this, if this wrecks like the semi world almost cut my throat out, um, I'm out of the industry. I'm, I'm just, I'm done. I'm then yeah, Nope. No way not gonna happen I won't go back to a truck just because I've seen I've seen the I've seen the balance and for me personally this is this is way better like so much better um it's not as cozy um no I look over at these sleepers all the time and I'm like man <laughs> I wish I could stand up and put my shirt on but all in all, how many times a day is that? Once, you know? Um, you gotta really bring the aperture way out and uh, and look at the big picture on stuff. And um, that's what I'm trying to do with the situation we're in right now with fuel. Um, that's right now, okay? I'm hoping that this isn't long-term, that this is just a glimpse, because I would hate to make the wrong decision. Um, over a moment, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm doing. I'm sitting here just uh, <laughs> hoping, I guess, I don't know. I'm out here like you guys. I'm, I'm out here just killing it at the pump and 
just like everybody else. So, um, it's, uh, it's wild right now, guys. It's, it's sick right now. It's, it's not cool at all. I, I just can't, I can't stand it. Like I said, I've, I have this underlying bad taste in my mouth from this industry, from just the, the years of getting to how I got to where I am, to where I, I know all these things to tell you guys, because I learned the very, very hard way <laughs> about most of them. And, oh, just, there's so many aspects of this, this that I cannot stand. But some of the, some of the things it gives you, which is, um, you've got, uh, I guess, uh, as far as like your personal life goes, when, when you make it to this level, when you, when you can get to the owner operator stage, which is unfortunately what a lot of people want to jump into right away. This is, this is like almost top tier as far as driving goes. Okay. As far as the driving goes. So, um, some guys, you, know, you got the best way to get in, <laughs> the best way to really appreciate this is to take your licks, uh, get an experience anyway. I was trying to forget the point that I was going to try to make, but anyway, um, we just got to, we got, we got to ride this out. We have to, you know, I mean, cause if you don't, somebody else is going to, it's not like, uh, taking a stand or, uh, screaming, screaming as loud as you can is really going to change much. Cause, uh, you can be replaced tomorrow. That's sad thing about this industry. It's a revolving door and it, it it's with or without you. It don't matter who has the truck, who don't. Uh, it just it sucks but that's real that's reality you know what i mean it's it's not what everybody wants to hear which you know that's that's really too bad because i don't hear much of what i wish i could hear every day um you know you just got to face face the music sometimes and um not to like bum people out but this is not a good time you know what i mean it this really sucks but like i said hopefully hopefully this is just a moment in, in the big picture of things, you know what I'm saying? So we don't know what's going to happen next. Um, I've heard a lot of rumors. Let me get some light in here. Uh, I've heard a lot of rumors about uh, fuel going down, fuel's going back up, fuel's going down, going up. I just, uh, I quit listening, guys. Just see it for what it is. Uh, you're being taken advantage of right now. Um, that's all there is to it. You can, you can call it whatever you want to. You can blame it on who or whatever you want to, but that's the truth. You're being taken advantage of. Dropping 350 a day for fuel. Oh, yeah. I keep back to my phone, which I'm on right now. Um, I have a screenshot from May of 2020. And it's a route from Illinois to New Mexico. And the highest fuel stop on that route was $1.40. And that was in uh, Eastern New Mexico. That was 20 months ago. And now look where fuel is. So it's more than tripled in 20 months. And uh, we're still pulling rates same rates. I mean, rates haven't gone up, you know, and it, as far as inflation goes, uh, that this is like an overall whatever. And, oh, this costs this much because it takes more fuel for a truck to get it there. Y'all ain't seeing the increase. I'm not seeing the increase. And, uh, it's not costing more to ship. Uh, I tell you what, you buy anything off Amazon right now and free shipping is still a thing. And if shipping rates were really flying through the roof, I highly doubt that that would be advertised very much. And I highly doubt the price of a postage stamp would stay the same. I highly doubt that all these other things that have stayed the same will stay the same. It's just, this is, this is manipulation. Man. It's not, it's not, it's not, this isn't inflation. This is stupid. This is stupid, but here we are. Stupid as it is. Can offset fuel price by buying a futures contract, fuel and selling it. Yeah, that's how companies hedge fuel costs. Good job. But I'm not a company big enough to hedge fuel costs unless I want to install a massive, massive uh, diesel tank at my house, um, which don't do me much good when I'm not there. So. That's a lot. Let's see. 
two more years to get it back to that. <laughs> Waiting on trailer, currently working FedEx ground. Layoff for CDL, a driver's beginning next month. On, on FedEx? Cost the contractors running their loads. Yeah, see, okay, so FedEx, I don't know if a lot of people know how FedEx works, um, especially the, uh, like from the hub to the house type deal. Um, people like, let's say me, um, I can go buy five, five of those uh, transit vans and lease them on with FedEx. They just have to be white. <laughs> At least I'm on with FedEx. I can get contracts with whatever. Well, I mean, you have to have the contracts that are available, but then you can basically, you get contracted five routes and then you hire drivers to drive your trucks for you. That's, uh, that's, uh, but the, the whole class A thing, like as far as ground, like in the, the wiggle wagons going down the road, the doubles and all that, they're laying those guys off. That's not good if that's true. That's bad. Contractors, that sucks. You can offset fuel. You don't need to buy a diesel tank. Just sell contracts before it expires. I'm good, man. <laughs> I don't want to contribute to what's going on right now. I'll tell you that. All right. Lack of freight in the markets. That's been happening for a while, though. Killing us when it comes to freight. Amazon whipped everybody's ass when they pulled them jets out. I was there for that. <laughs> They're like, we can't negotiate on a, on a decent percentage. We're just going to make our own shipping company like this weekend. That's how it was. It was literally like, yeah, we got jets and trucks. And so you, it's all you saw were those gray blue Amazon transits and, and the, the, the pro masters and stuff rolling down on like eight deep on a step deck. Just, that's all you saw for a long time. That was wild. But yeah, they put a hurting on everybody. And, uh, you know, you would think stuff like that would try to stipen, stipen the greed a little bit, but that's what, that's what runs the world right now. And uh, it's not going to stop. You know, you think shipping companies would learn with that, but don't seem to be the case. No problem. What is that? Baker Baker family overland? Try to try to do that every day, man. Every day I'm on here anyway. Which isn't many lately. <laughs> Serious question. Looking at chains and binders, what size should I be getting? How many? What are you running? What setup are you running? <clears throat> if it's a hot shot setup, you're not gonna need three H chains. I don't care who says what about that. You don't need three eighths in hot shot. You're not hauling any one item that's gonna require three eighths chains. You're just not. I've been on the other end. I've ran. I've I've snapped a three eighths chain. That's you know with those some of those telehandlers and stuff. Those JLGs. Some of them are heavy. <laughs> they'll snap. They'll snap a chain, especially if it's twisted, which is what happened. Thirty five five. Are you gonna run CDO? It doesn't matter. Um, so for forty foot. I would get eight chains, five sixteenths. Um, for your ratchet binders or snaps, whatever you want, get a five sixteenths, three eighths combo. Um, that way, if you ever do move up, which is what everybody thinks going to a semi is, you don't have to get any winches. Welcome. Yeah, eight, five sixteenths, 20 foot chains, and uh, eight binders. Shouldn't need more than that because even if you were to have like three things that need chained down at four points, just use one chain across the deck at two points. And then you can turn one chain into two. So you're not gonna, you, I, I never once used eight chains. Um, I used six once, I think maybe twice when I was running the hot shot. Uh, I used eight, 12, 16 chains a lot on a semi <laughs> but nah not hot shot so nervous starting out been doing truck game for eight years time to work for myself yeah <laughs> it's a big step man that's nothing to you call it tomorrow yeah that'll work man um i won't be doing much till one 
Uh, it's a, it is a big step. You should be scared. You know, it's the people that jump into this all lighthearted and think they know everything. Uh, they're, they're the ones that they, they you won't hear them anymore. 20 foot. Doug. I mean, not necessarily scared, but not even really nervous, but just respect this stuff, you know, take it serious. Um, and, uh, you'll, you'll come out ahead with that definitely you'll you'll make a lot less, less mistakes if uh if you, if you come in not not fearless you know what i'm saying so yeah that's not a bad thing don't be don't be nervous but uh well I mean, don't be nervous about that maybe be nervous about fuel mileage and all that right now <laughs> that's all i watched this weekend it's all i watched sat here and stare at the dash all weekend long i pulled over when it got too windy in the wrong direction i mean this is stupid this is so dumb it's bad it's, i don't know it's just not cool new ram eight yeah well I've, i'm in a 21 ram but it's got the uh serial box of a transmission and don't know when to shift and i don't know this thing just it's garbage but i was averaging with the wind in my face, about six miles a gallon. With uh, the wind in my back, I was getting about eight and a half. But I had two, I had two diesel. Uh, I had a Chevy 3500 and a 250, an F250 on here, diesel. Take a shower, get your chest clean. Yeah. <laughs> well, you mean this? I don't, I don't understand. I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> I probably shouldn't even respond to every comment, maybe. I'm tired, guys. Took delivery of a 22 last month. Hopefully, it's got the icing in it. Apparently, that's supposed to be magical. Wish you had delete and tune. I wish I had a different truck. To be honest with you, I need a cabin chassis. Uh, I need a bigger axle on the rear so that I can actually haul stuff on the front and uh, drive on the interstate and not avoid way stations. That's what I wish her to go back to Ford. Yes, 550 with a 444. 550, just for the weight. Love third gen. Yeah. <laughs> I would too. But I got in too late. I got in uh well, my option to buy right away CP4 issues in 2020. So didn't do that, thankfully. But man, those are just helped me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, dude. Um, dude, 2020s are, uh, you could buy a whole lot of those right now, and they're, they're not even marked up that bad. If you uh, if you want to be replacing a fuel pump every once in a while, don't buy one of those. Like, even dealerships will tell you not to buy one. I don't, I think they're tired of seeing them in there for fuel issues. But Anyway, uh, so yeah, hopefully that helped, Doug. Um, yeah, that's what, for, for hot shot weights, and yeah, five sixteenths. Um, I go with a with a forty foot trailer. You, I would I would take. I I'd take uh, I'd take eight. I rolled with six, but I'd take eight just in case. Um, and uh, eight binders. So twenty one RFE. <laughs> you can stick with it after the market. Yeah. Enterprise used trucks, Ford's F550. Four pounds, one tray for all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, you probably get a lot of money out there right now. No, no three eights, five sixteenths. <laughs> Enterprise used trucks, the Ford's F550. I don't get that. Explain that, Terry. Terry. I think you missed a word or something. Man, we got 76 people in here. Damn. Sorry you missed all the uh, all the good stuff. <laughs> I guess or the explanation of everything. But uh, stupid year, man. Stupid, stupid year. For me, anyway. I'm in the research stage before getting into hot shot and trying to find some opinions on renting trucks current day, and is it still a thing? 
um, the whole rental thing of it just basically what's happened is they've lost a lot of fleet because the massive packages they were getting from everybody is just not happening right now. So they don't have a big volume of trucks, so they're not taking on new people. And um, it sounds like they're actually trying to thin out, just like uh, what I told y'all they were trying to do with me with the with the mileage and stuff like that, which really sucks because um, I probably could potentially, if they would have had some trucks, brought them quite a bit of business. But, you know, who am I compared to them? So they don't need me to make money. Um, but as far as renting something like this, just almost not, not possible right now, not long term. It's not right now, but every time you ask, it's gonna be, uh, it'll either be, well, let's see, what is right now? It's March, oh, we're looking at like midsummer, and then midsummer will roll around and you ask, and it'll be like, ah, it's looking like the end of the year, and then the year rolls around. I don't work for Enterprise, man, but I can tell you what I hear, and that's what I hear. <laughs> A whole bunch of nothing. Go to the website, see what's for sale. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They actually told me what my Ford sold for. It made me sick. Put over a million miles on this 2016. Yeah. You're killing with that truck. You paid it off quick, too. You did good. Nomadic Brit, man. Oh, bringing back memories of Schneider. <laughs> Wasn't a terrible place to be. Their, uh, their facilities are nice. Most of them. Does Corey still need help? Corey still suck next to that bar the rentals have auxiliary tanks no you can't put one in but it's got to be out when you turn it in no rentals barely have keys to be honest with you they got mud flaps um you got to buy your own setup to uh haul things in the back whether it be a gooseneck plate or a, a fifth wheel hitch unless you get a stupid ram like i did with the puck system and then you can buy something that's either only exclusively for a ram or a 500 hundred dollar adapter for a fifth wheel, which is stupid. That's why I don't have one right now. That was gonna be my Christmas present to myself was a fifth wheel and uh, didn't happen because I'm not spending 500 bucks for an adapter play on a stupid truck. So if you do get a Ram, don't get one with puck system. Stupid. Orange all the way, that's where I got my start. Team Orange, pumpkins. Where can you find regs on your vehicle can have like as far as DOT, tent wheels, etc. Uh, the FMCSR have all that in there, but you know, tent you <laughs> tent stupid because I guess apparently every state thinks they're specific and above the, the federal laws or whatever. So I guess that's the way it is, though. Each state can be stricter but not more lenient. I think that's the way it works. But yeah, I wouldn't mess with tent. Tent's an issue. Um, it sucks though if you live in like Arizona or Florida or somewhere it's very sunny and very hot. <laughs> You're recommending cars or freight? I've seen or Mike car? Um, I've got a video on that actually that'll that'll break that down for you, man. There's a lot to a lot to unpack in that question. <laughs> to be honest with you, um, yeah, you, you can you can search that. Uh, Go, go to my videos and look up uh, cars versus freight or which I think it's titled which is better for you so that'll uh, that'll help you out there yeah it's uh, you're gonna get a million different answers because you talk to a million different people but uh, you you will be able to determine that for yourself because it's gonna base, be based on a lot where you live what you like to do how yeah it's gonna come down to you man the green trucker Bible. Stay away. <laughs> you better have one on your person. I know I didn't even pick that up. The things that I think I might have even said it though. That's probably why. The things you're supposed to have in your truck. That video's popular lately. I've been getting notifications on it. I I didn't show an FMCSR. I don't think anybody said anything. And you're supposed to have that in the truck. The more you know. Uh ERG. Let's see. Might jump off here in a minute. I think I'm gonna grab a shower. 
Corey's the pits. Yeah. Figures. It's Corey's the pits. Next to Pittsburgh. <laughs> I hated that drive, man. And like, oh yeah. Then you started on Corey. Corey and was it Keysby? <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway. New Mexico. Got screwed on trying to get into hot shot. You had to drop out of trying before. Wait, trying. Couldn't afford to a grand extra. Now I'm in the hole with no wheels. Damn. The screws on trying to get into hot. Yeah. Had to drop out of trying. Couldn't afford two, 2K extra grand. What was that for? I'm still going, man. I'm not not mentally strong. <laughs> I'll be honest with you right now. It's just a, it's just a blur. I'm just I'm, I'm in a daze lately. There's just so much going on. You just gotta laugh about it. Are you? You, uh, you just check out. <laughs> if you don't, uh, I'd be hard to get a Twit card. I didn't think about that. I think my Twit card's about to expire, to be honest with you, if it hasn't already. I don't deal with the ports. Um, word to the wise, if you don't live around an area that requires you to be in the ports, don't go. It's not worth it. It's such a time killer. Um, but if you live in an area like Freeport or Houston or Jacksonville or Savannah or Virginia Beach, probably want a Twit card. Is Twit worth it? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. If, if for what it is and for what it costs, um, yeah, you got I mean... You need one to get on military bases. You need one to get into ports, even though every port has their own set of rules above that. Um, yeah, you know, for what we do, it's worth it. Uh, yeah, expired December 4th. <laughs> uh, Show you how often I use that. All right. Best rates or ports load? Yeah, the rates are great. But I've, I've sat... I've been told to leave and come back. Sat there all day. Oh, we can't get to you. You didn't know that 10 hours ago, for real? One month to get Twit. Yeah, it um, yeah, it takes a minute. You'll go you'll go do all your thing, pay your money and all that, and um, do your thumbprints and make your password. And then uh, they'll take your picture and then they'll call you in like four or five weeks and let you know the card's in. I guess they're... Uh, I don't know if the cards are imported from somewhere that's really far away, but I don't know. It's kind of strange. You can get a, you can get a, you know, military ID printed on spot, chip card, just like Twig. I don't, I don't know. What it takes so long, but yeah, it's not, it's not fast. So don't expect to get one in a week. You know. Yeah, you're gonna have to do the application process. Go, go get it and all knocked out, and then, then just wait. Keysby sucks. Next to that Dana yard. I hate that place. <laughs> I hate that place so bad. That's where we sat whenever Snyder switched over uh, to uh, Omni Tracks. Oh, oh my God. There's two, they had a glitch too, just like my fuel card, my former fuel card company. Uh, I ditched them today after that email felt so good <laughs> fool me once you know oh my god yeah yeah anyway uh you can explain a little bit hang on a second explain a little bit on gear ratios okay is cp steve still in here he's not i know he's not this is what i understand about gear ratios the first number is how many time the wheel turns to the second number which is how many time the flywheel or the drive shaft spins so like on a 488 gear ratio the tire is going to spin four times to every 88 times the drive shaft spins which is why it's such low rpm because the higher the back end is on that the more torque you're going to have so like a 488 gear ratio on like a 5500 is going to be more for like applications that aren't hauling highway speeds. It's going to be for like tow trucks, dump, you know, rear dumps, uh, 
ambulances, which I mean, that's a totally different situation since they haul ass everywhere, but it's not for distance, you know, but like on a, on a, uh, a regular like highway truck, you know, it's like 410, 444 is good. Um, cause that's gonna, basically the, one of the worst things about the 488s is that 65 miles an hour is gonna put you at like 21, 2200. And, uh, oh, 4.88 turns for one turn. That makes more sense. So anyway, it's gonna, it's going to put you at like 20, especially on a six speed, it's gonna put you at like, uh, 20, uh, 2200 RPM, 2100 RPM at like 65, 68 miles an hour. So like 70 is not a good idea, especially under a load, especially upgrades. You know, it's like if you're going to downshift a whole lot and you're putting a ton of stress on, um, not good, not good at all. So that's, uh, you, you don't, in this application right here, you don't want 488s. It's just, it's going to kill you on fuel and you're not going to be able to do uh, major highway speed. I mean, it's, a, it's an easy way. What is it? 411? 20, to all 2500? Is it 75? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even want to know. Wouldn't even want to know. I don't do 75. Nothing feels right at 75 in these things. 488. 4.88 turns per one turn. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense, huh? 373. Yep. What would you recommend for a CDL setup with a 40 foot gooseneck? So, with a hot shot setup, 3,500s are good, 4,500s are good. I don't really think, I mean, it depends on what you got. Um, but for a regular trailer, I wouldn't think that you would need a 5,500 or an F550 or anything like that. You do the, the one ton and up. Um, for cars though, cars are different, especially with the three car setup like I got. I have to really watch what I put on the front of the trailer because especially if I pull it straight on, the engine is right on my rear axle the engine of that car you know it's not eight foot behind me on a trailer it's directly above so there's certain vehicles you know at a certain weight point that i can't haul or i'd have to flip them around backwards but i have to be really careful on what i put up there also so a lot of times just because of this truck not necessarily even the trailer but just because of the truck there's certain cars and vehicles i can't haul with other cars you know it's like i can't haul like a two truck setup in a car because I'd be overweight if I put another truck up top, um, depending in, in most situations. But, um, you know, it's just uh, if I had a beefier rear axle that could handle that weight, um, it would open up even more opportunity for me because I could, uh, I could, I could haul more things, you know, and in a different, different variations than I can right now because I'm limited by my rear axle weight rating. Uh, so yeah, so with the CDL setup, you'd be good 3,500, 450. I'd honestly go higher. They're built better, but you know, if you're hauling cars, I would for 450 or 4,500 minimum is 3,500 are just, it's not enough most days to be honest with you. Uh, Michael, yeah, yeah, that's a bad day, buddy. <laughs> it's not like today's much better, but uh, it's just like I said, I got a lot to think about. So, nice. All right, see you, nomadic. Uh, my feet sucks. Set up seventeen eight with no load. Yeah, if you're running on CDL, yeah, that does really suck. But, uh. Lancaster. All right. So I'm going to run. Um, I don't know if I really shed any insight on much today. <laughs> 65 feet truck and trailer. Yeah, that's the, that's the law. Depends on who's holding the tape measure, to be honest with you. But 65 is the, that's the, that's the two numbers written down in most states that Indiana has their own rules. California is, you know, its own country and stuff, but 
yeah, 65 foot, you're pretty much safe. Best bet, honestly, um, to start it all over. <laughs> like if I was to start all over, um, I'd just go cabin chassis, to be honest with you. Just just ride it. Just don't even worry about any of that crap because then you can be 75 foot. Uh, you don't get harassed nearly as much, um, especially in Missouri and Indiana. So, yeah, that's my two cents on that. PA. Oh yeah, yeah. I see. I, the only thing I see about power only in the hot shot world is they pay shit. They pay like a dollar twenty, dollar fifty, maybe. But it'll be like it'll be like a boat, big ass boat in a trailer. It's like no money, tons of just. I mean, just killing fuel mileage on some of these things. Um, but I've seen some that do pay good, but. They're not nearly as much as the ones that just barely cover expenses. Honestly, man, it's like, but that's that's what I see on uh, it's what I see on Central. I don't know if any other low boards maybe power only is a lot better, but the Central stuff that I see for power only is trash. It just it's bad. I if I were power only, I'd be worried big time. So it's thanks, Jonathan. Appreciate that. Thanks, Larry. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. I'm glad I could help out. I know uh, I'm trying not to be like super downer and depressing like this, but like I said, I mean, times times just suck right now, and um, that's the reason I'm not. I haven't got out. I haven't gone under. Um, I haven't quit YouTube. I just have had nothing, nothing good to say. You know what I mean? Nothing. Nothing positive, nothing beneficial to anybody, to be honest with you. Um, and I, I don't just want to jump on here and complain, you know what I'm saying? So we all see what's happening. Um, some understand it, some don't. Some, you know, don't care. But uh, it's affecting all of us. So like I said, the guys looking to get into this, I'd pump the brakes a little bit. Um, the guys that just got into this, Man, <laughs> well, uh, start networking for real. Y'all need to talk to each other. You need to need help. You need to figure it out and uh, need need. This is definitely time to pull together, you know, instead of uh, drift apart and stab backs while we're at it. So, um, two forty mile profit contract. Curious and knowing more. There's a lot to know, dude. <laughs> a lot to know. Think, think you needed some encouragement? Yeah, no problem. I'm, I'm glad just somebody was encouraged by this, to be honest with you. Um, it felt good to talk about, you know, a lot of the issues that's been going on. Um, but, yeah. But, um, you know, it's, it's a thing about tomorrow. You know, something's going to happen. It might be worse. It might be better. But, uh what I do is up to me, so, and uh, I got things to do tomorrow, so, that, that's what I know, stay busy, and uh, you worry about the, the stuff you can't control a whole lot less when, you, when you're busy doing stuff, so, <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's a better way to be about it right now, but, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm stacking up to head the house, and I, I think I'm going to watch, you know, watch for about a week, and, uh, probably I'll probably at least take a week off and um I'm, I'm being kind of surgical with where I'm running right now uh I'm running a whole lot of midwest and I'm running a lot of cheap fuel states like I said I could have grossed a little bit more but I'd have probably took home less than I did this week if I would have went elsewhere um I didn't want to come to North Dakota really didn't at all especially in the winter you know i mean it, it wasn't that bad it was actually kind of nice to be honest with you but um you know, like it snowed last night but this just isn't a region i run you know what i mean it's it's far away from the house there's not a lot ever coming out of here um now stuff that does come out as far as the cars and even freight that i've seen um it's it's good you know it pays good because who else is going to take it you know what i'm saying so um they uh 
Yeah, I'm up here at uh, I'm up here at Staymart right now. There's a Canadian flag in the parking lot. I haven't seen a Timmy since. I haven't seen a Tim Hortons in a long time. To be honest with you, I don't even remember the last place. I think Colorado. Um, yeah, I'm at Staymart. That's pretty nice. But anyway, um, oh, I was talking about yeah. It's, I'm I'm you know preference is kind of out the window. I'm still running within the region that I kind of want to stick in, but I'm on the far edges of it. I'm, I'm, I'm out past where I like to be. Um, I'm not comfortable in, I'm, this isn't my little bubble that I've been rolling around in for like two years now. And, um, uh, I don't, I don't know. It, I mean, it's not bad to me. I, I, I grow, I, I did pretty good this week, to be honest with you, but I'm trying to stay in the states that have the lower costs, right? So I'm trying to stay in the cheap fuel states, you know, Iowa and Missouri and Nebraska and Oklahoma and um, the Dakotas up here haven't been that bad to be on. Well, I mean, it's all bad, but <laughs> it's it's nothing like packing up and, and hitting, you know, Utah and, and uh, Washington State and all that right now. Um, or the Northeast, of course, or even the, the Illinois, Indiana. I don't know what happened to that state. Indiana used to be so good on fuel. Anyway, um, yeah, that's what I'm doing. You gotta, you gotta be a little bit smart about what you're doing. Uh, if you are coming out here, don't, don't just take, you know, keep, keep everything considered guys right now. Cause like I said, uh, uh, next, next to the rate that you're running, number one priority should be, you know, besides even region right now. Cause like I said, I'm, I'm in North Dakota. I don't come here. You know, I don't have a reason to usually. Um, but fuel, my fuel cost is right up against, it's, it's like number two to consider underneath the, the actual rate right now. Um, and, and I've, I've, I've come out ahead, you know, um, a lot better than I would have if I would have went somewhere else or stayed in my little protective bubble that I've been operating in for a very long time. <laughs> How to retire young in trucking. Uh, do something else. That's it. Or get a whole lot of money and 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 just don't ever start driving. Have everybody drive for you. This 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 industry is uh I don't know, man. I don't know anymore. It's it's changed like three times since I've been in it. It's just it's hard to hard to grasp, but greed greed rules this industry so how, how to retire young and trucking be as greedy as possible and screw over everybody in your path that's how you do that the, growing your company moving the office uh yeah but i mean that's i, I talked about that earlier actually i'm sorry you guys rolling in here at the end of this but um one thing's keeping me from that right now is insurance i can't run the risk of anybody screwing this up because i won't have my rates increased, I will get dropped. So, uh, two year mark happens in August. Uh, by then I have a decision to make. I don't really want to pile on a lot of assets right now, especially with the fluctuation and everything fuels up equipment's up trucks are impossible to find without being marked up almost twice what they're worth. It's not a good time to bring on assets to throw drivers that I don't know in my vehicles that I'm responsible for. You know what I mean? So, that's the hiring side leasing on drivers yeah that would be a lot easier but i have to be able to provide them freight they can't provide freight for themselves and as of right now i'm it's it's going to come to the point to where if i do hire some drivers on or not hire lease because if i do anything right now it'll be lease people okay the first thing that i'm going to do is lease on some drivers because number one uh I need to make some contacts as far as people that I trust. And if you jumping in, if you're jumping in day one, employee one, well, you're not an employee being on or off still. I need to have some people to kind of expand with at the very beginning. So I think rates would be a little bit as like as far on my end, I think rates would be a little bit, uh, a little bit friendlier to the owner op because we would be figuring out a lot together. Not to say, like I said, I've done that side before. Uh, I haven't done it from this end. I've done it from a different end, you know, as, as the driver manager side, which did almost everything but cut payroll. But still, you know what I'm saying? Uh, there's, a, there's a lot to, 
there's a lot I need to think about that goes into that. And to be honest with you, I've, I've not thought about that in a few months because I've had a lot more on my plate and a lot more on my mind. And, you know, there, there's just, there's a lot, there's a lot in my way right now. So, but that's why that, that's why on the hiring people to help out, basically, it would take a lot off my plate as far as financial, uh, um, I don't know, not, not named necessarily stability right now. It take a lot of responsibility off me, but not a ton because I mean, even if I'm only pulling like 10 after all expenses are over, you know, 10, let's say I end up 10% profit on each owner op. I need 10 owner ops to really pull myself off the road and make a hundred percent of what a driver over the road would make. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and that'd be hard to reach right off the bat. And it, it, it wouldn't happen. I wouldn't hire 10 people at once. So, um, yeah, that's that. And, uh, like I said, though, um, I appreciate everybody coming in and that was, uh, I didn't expect this many people to watch, especially me. Everybody thought I was just a ghost at this point, but, um, it's been wild. It's good. You guys are, are cutting it up in the comments. That's, that's awesome to see. It's like I said, this is a time where people need to help each other out. Uh, it's time to pull together everybody you can. So, uh, good luck out here guys <laughs> this has been a not 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 interesting not not fun start to the year for uh everybody right now this is just uh not good so we'll see where it goes from today but as of today um yeah you can run 110 gallons without a tanker endorsement um Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm hanging in here. Like I said, the the biggest issue I've got with all this so far, it's it's no. I I know. <laughs> I'm not I'm not like gloating or anything like that. But I I'm very good at this. Okay, and I know how to make money in this. I'm 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 very good with the with the with the lanes. I'm very good with managing what I need to manage to do this. What I what is killing me mentally really with all this it's not the money it's well it's not how much i'm i'm making it's how much i'm getting taken from me okay and on the expense side of things um it's just it's it's really getting personal to me you know what i'm saying so that that's my issue okay that's a, it's not like oh i'm going under i don't know what i'm gonna do um it's uh I don't know. It just, it strikes a nerve, a big one. Like this is, I haven't, I haven't been like this with this industry ever. So it's, uh, it's new, new. I gotta, I gotta try to see what I'm going to do about it. But as of right now, I'm, I'm out here at a truck stop. Uh, first weekend, like I said, I've, well, I'm on seven days now. I've, I've, I've actually worked a full week. I haven't done that in eight months, probably. <laughs> but um yeah i'm out here with you guys and it's it hurts it really does it's it sucks to see too it sucks to see um i think one of the I, it's some some of these guys faces that i see walking through here because a lot of the truck stops i stay at and i stop at are just mom and pop places so most of the guys i see i don't i don't see many company trucks right it's it's almost all owner ops and stuff and it's man long face long face city around most most places right now and it, it's just it's it's sad you know it sucks to see so but tomorrow's tomorrow and uh we can get which are highly underappreciated yeah so, yep yeah um you know, every, everybody's collective though is the back. Any everybody working is the backbone of this country. That's, I mean, I don't, I don't think any individual person or industry should be put on a pedestal, really. But um, as far as appreciation goes, yeah, I, I think I think we get the short end of the stick a lot. Um, sadly, within our own industry. So, um, but, but I mean, as far as like a lot of the dry van guys especially or the you know the, the semi truck people hauling a lot of just stock you know not not things people necessarily need right away because i've been there i've been there 
several times and it's it's sickening how you're treated you know what i mean to to a place that relies on you heavily you know exclusively to be honest um uh yeah yeah i would say that i'd say it's pretty one-sided really but um go think about how much it's moved oh yeah man most most everything <laughs> at one at one stage in the game or another yeah yeah my land by air by sea <laughs> that's not even just a military thing that's uh that's transport man but yeah it's in, in game is usually yep yeah, on a truck doesn't matter where it starts but all right guys y'all have a good night and uh hope everybody's pushing through this like uh like we need to be but i just don't i don't know i don't know where the light is at the end of it all you know but uh, I guess we'll see it when, it when it's coming. But this needs to be this little spike and a twist on profits that everybody's experiencing above our heads. Uh, I think it needs to be about as brief as possible because this is uh, this is bad. This is really bad. This is how you get people to snap. Not saying I'm going to, but uh, this is this isn't good at all. And it's not just our country, guys. I don't know if anybody. I mean, it's paid attention to other reports or talked to anybody from other places, but not to say believe everything you see, but this is, this is, uh, this is large scale stuff. And, uh, I'd be, I'd be very, uh, I'd be a hundred percent shocked if this had anything really to do with Russia. I think they're being a scapegoat, um, something to point fingers at, but yeah. Somebody's making money off of us. That's for sure. I just saw a video from Russia. It was 190 a gallon. Yeah, look at the, uh, well, I mean, it's always been that way, though. I mean, look how cheap our fuel was when we were actually exporting it. Uh, look at the, like, United Arab Emirates and all that stuff. Look at the, <laughs> what they pay for fuel. They almost get paid to buy fuel. Um, hot shot Enterprise truck rental. Um, I mean, just as this, uh, Right, I saw wasn't what I seen in other videos. Yeah, they're um, as far as I know right now, man, they're not taking on new new people because they don't have the trucks for it. So, but um, you always hear things like they're gonna raise rate rates or whatever. But you'll sign a contract if if it ever gets back to that point to where they have trucks. But last I heard was midsummer they might get some. So I wouldn't expect to be able to jump in this program. Which is one thing to where if I run out of it and I do buy a truck, it's like your option there. And it's not just my option, right? It's a lot of people's options to where a lot of people were using Enterprise is like, if my truck breaks down and it's gonna be down, especially with the parts issue right now, uh, to where you could be down like six months or four months waiting on a damn part, you know, to fix your truck, you could go to Enterprise and rent a truck to bide your time until yours is fixed that's basically not even an option right now you know not large scale so um i don't know it's just not not a good time right now <laughs> to be honest with you so um i don't know i don't know what i'm gonna do but i i think i'm swinging past that 50 percent mark to where I'm, I'm gonna push through this and and make something happen and hopefully um like we, what we were saying as far as uh, expanding at some point, you know, hopefully gives a uh, return on a light. <laughs> yeah, hopefully gives some some other guys some opportunity in this in this industry, you know, but I'm glad I don't have anybody under me right now because like I was saying, it's uh, I just over the last the course of the last couple of months, I, I just haven't had it's it. I haven't wanted to make a video to encourage people to come jump into this right now so um i just i just can't do it other people might be able to but i can't but um hopefully it'll turn around or uh at least get back to where it was as steady as it was but um until then uh you guys have a good night and like i said thanks for thanks for joining me tonight and uh 
let me get a little off my check like that. One guy, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, but he said it, it feels good to talk about it. Yeah, sometimes you have to, right? But uh, yeah, you guys have a good one, and uh, you know, crank some vids out pretty soon. And uh, until then, we'll, we'll see you guys next time.